Our gathering hymn this morning is hymn number 20. Hymn number 20, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 20. And let's sing verses 5 and 6 and 7. Let us rise and let us sing. O come, thou key of death, come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather together for our Eucharist this day, we gather with you here. If anyone is listening at home, we gather once more to celebrate the only gift in life that matters, that our God is so deeply in love with us. And so once again, let us pause as the day of our salvation draws near, that we might pray our God once more, fill our hearts with peace and a sense of love that cannot die. You are Emmanuel, God with us, Lord have mercy. You are Christ, our light, Christ have mercy. You are our salvation, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who are weighed down from of old by slavery beneath the yoke of sin may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated and be nourished by God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. 
Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. Therefore, the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land of the north and from all the lands to which I banished them. They shall again live on their own land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed forever be his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Amen. O leader of the house of Israel, giver of the law to Moses on Sinai, come to rescue us with your mighty power. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son. You are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. As we gather this morning, um, this particular passage of Scripture occurs right after the genealogy right after the so-and-so was the father of so-and-so was the father of so-and-so. And so this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. And as I'm fond of asking, 
um, when I was teaching, I am fond of asking, um, how many annunciations are there uh, in the Gospels? And the answer would be two. One for Mary in the Gospel of Luke, and now this is Matthew's annunciation, but it occurs to Joseph when the word of the Lord was to Joseph as well. And beautifully done, in a dream, he is told, this child, this child is begotten of the Holy Spirit, so take Mary into your home. And if you will, what difference does a decision or a choice make? What decision does the human response make a lot? In our lives, if we, we never know, do we, who we help, what is the response? Our response sometimes, um, is it helping someone, someone who is in need, someone who doesn't have food, someone, someone, whatever it might be. How do we, our response can change a life, can change a family, can change a world. And we don't realize, that's why when you hear the psalm response, justice shall flourish in his time, fullness of peace forever. How can we, how can we have that occur except that our response can change life? And the reason I went there is because Joseph had a choice. His response changed everything. You know, we always hear in this world, it takes two. <laughs> it takes two. And so Mary said, yes. And we focus on Mary's yes. And that's beautiful. Yes. But look at Joseph. Joseph also had to say yes. Poor Joseph. <laughs> I always like to say, poor Joe. He's always kind of forgotten in that sense. Because he himself we always say Mary set the, the world in motion, and she did. But simultaneously, Joseph also set life into motion by his response. His response. And so our human response, sometimes we may take it and say, well, what can I do? Have you ever said that? Well, what can I do for Yemen? What can I do with civil wars and all these things going on in the world? What can I do? That's a good question. I don't have an answer. And the reason I don't have an answer is because I don't know what God is speaking to you to be and to do. Aha, uh -huh. you're looking at me like chicken. You should have answered that. You never know. One final story, if this is going to help you. I remember making a phone call to someone and absolutely, I don't know about your lives, but sometimes I can go back to back to back to back to back to back to back. And I said, I got to make this call. I have time. I can do that. What I didn't know, what I didn't know, is somebody was incredibly down, incredibly depressed, incredibly, incredibly sad. That's what I didn't know. But something inside said to me, it's the Lord who said, David, stop, breathe, sit, call, and I did, and a life was changed. Not by me, but God changed a life in that person. We do not know what our human response is going to bring. We do not know, but I do know is if we open our hearts and let the fire of God's spirit enter into us, ah, things are gonna happen that we didn't expect. So be ready. Be ready. If you really do, open your hearts. Be ready for what the Lord is going to ask you to do. And I suspect you're already doing. And sometimes I'm going, Lord, did I do enough? Have you ever thought that too? I have. Lord, have I done enough? <sighs> I should never ask the question. I should just wake up in the morning and say, Lord, thank you. What about today? What will you have me do? Wow, that's just more peaceful, I think, than any other response. Let's let justice flourish in our time and fullness of peace that only the Prince of Peace can bring through us in this world. Amen.
Let us rise. Father of the heavens and the earth, to you we offer praise and prayer once again this day, for we believe that you do hear us. There is never a time that you do not, but once more open our hearts that we might hear your response to these prayers. May the church's many ministries continually direct people's attention to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May local and national leaders put the needs of their people first. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we reflect the joy of our Lord's coming to those around us. We pray to the Lord. May we welcome the grace to set our own egos aside and respond to the needs of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we remember today in a special way all the poor souls in purgatory for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And also a special added prayer today for all those who are on hospice, those who are struggling with their very life right now, that truly our small response might give them great peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. To you, gentle God, we turn once more. Guide us, love us by your grace. Heal us, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine that we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. And so we rise and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. Sanctify these gifts, O Lord, the sacrifice offered to you. Make us acceptable to your name, that we may merit for all eternity to be the companions of Christ, by whose death our own mortality was healed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang his, of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watching in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder and praise. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we join that hymn of your glory as without end and sing, Holy, Holy, Holy.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we... Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all of your humble servants. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Let us rise, for it is at the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching that we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
you who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. We behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us rise and let us pray. May we receive your mercy in the midst of your temple, O Lord, and show fitting honor to the coming solemnities of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our very lives. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in singing a closing hymn, number 23, People Look East, 23, People Look East. People look east, the time is...